Hi and welcome to St. George's and our noonday service. Today is Wednesday, August 5th, and we're so glad you're here. You can join me if you have a Book of Common Prayer on page 103. Otherwise, just follow along and repeat after me if you would like. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our psalm is Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongues with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our scripture reading is Hebrews 10, or 12, verses 1 to 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. Unlike me, you may be an avid and dedicated runner. Now, don't get me wrong, I played sports my entire life, and I actually love going on a run. I really enjoy the sound of the feet pounding the pavement, sweat trickling down my brow, leg muscles burning, runner's high, you name it. However, there's just one problem. I have a problem with accountability. My alarm goes off at 6 a.m. and I hit the snooze repeatedly. The lure of the comforter is great and more than likely one or more of my three toddlers has been up over the course of the night. You get the picture. So imagine my excitement the other day when my five-year-old told me that she would like to join me on my morning runs. I thought, brilliant, what better accountability than a morning fresh five-year-old? Now, unfortunately, after just one run, she decided that it was not for her. But I discovered that perhaps the only better accountability partner than a five-year-old is an insistent two-year-old. So yes, every morning, my two-year-old's first question is, are we going on a walk or run? So I pop her into our jogging stroller and off we trot. And it was on one of these morning runs that I thought of this passage in Hebrews, the one we just read in chapter 12. To get the fullest sense of the passage we read, we should flip back to the end of chapter 10, starting in verse 32. Here we see the contest, or this language of the contest introduced. And in chapter 11, we read of the catalog of the heroes of faith who had all run the race before us. Some lived successful lives and some were persecuted. However, they were all flawed. The thing is that they didn't necessarily possess a great faith, but what they did have was a steadfast faith in a great God. And it's in light of these role models of faith that we start chapter 12. They're these great cloud of witnesses. We're given the picture that in our life, in our life of faith is a race, and not just any race. It's not a 100 or 200 meter sprint. It's a grueling, demanding, and even at times agony-inducing marathon. It takes all we've got. Now, I've never run a marathon, but I lived in Boston for five years, and I was there the year after the Boston Marathon bombing, and I stood on the sidelines cheering on my friends who were running. And after months and months of training, I watched them at the 23rd mile. They were exhausted, pushing through blood and sweat and tears, persevering to that finish line. And the first verse of chapter 12 
exhorts us to throw off all the dead weight in our lives in sin. And like marathon runners, we need to be lean and focused and disciplined. And the unencumbered Christian is one who asks of every aspect of their life if it distracts us from our faith or dampens our enthusiasm for the things of God. It's not so much is it sinful, but rather is it in the way of greater humility, greater faith, greater love, greater purity or courage or greater self-control? Does it help me run for Jesus? If even good things like sports or work, status, money or habits can distract us, then how much more do we need to throw off and shed the sin that like untied laces can trip us up and make us stumble. Many of us are occasional joggers in the race of faith. The fear of the unknown can dog us in the Christian life. But take a look at verse two. How comforting to know that Jesus has marked out the way and he's run it before us. And running this race of faith is both singular and communal. We cannot run the race for another, nor are we the judges. However, we can prop one another up, much like those who train for marathons do so in teams or pairs. They have accountability partners, much like my two-year-old is for me in the mornings. And briefly, I just want to take a look at verse 3, because not only can sin encumber us, but the devil distracts us with discouragements that can cause us to become weary and quit. And these past few months are a perfect example. We've had widespread sickness, ongoing racial injustice, fears for ourselves and for our loved ones, bickering from government leaders. And if that's not a recipe for discouragement, frankly, I don't know what is. Let us not react to these disappointments and hardships, though, with discouragement. For after all, nothing in our lives is outside of God's love. He has set that course. Even though in the face of these things, the easy answer could well be apathy, I urge you to resist it. We all need training and we all need partners to get us up to put the work in. And sometimes it requires a great deal of hard work. But my friends, the joy that comes from it is incomparable. And indeed, Hebrew says that we should look towards the cross for perseverance. And that transforming picture of the cross just fills the page. And we can, as Jesus did, look past the pain and suffering to see the everlasting joy of eternity. Jesus is the pioneer, the originator, and even better, the perfecter. And faith is an action we exert, but also a glorious gift we receive. And I would love to challenge you and myself to choose to run this race of faith during this difficult season. Let us be accountability partners with one another to continue worshiping and growing and learning in our faith and with our church. May we find the joy of being with one another, whether online or in person, and of choosing to grow in our faith during this difficult season. Now, it may not seem as if we are reaping the fruit immediately, but the fruit will be borne out in our lives and in our hearts and in our habits. So my brothers and sisters, let us be encouraged by that great cloud of witnesses. Let us be buoyed by the great Redeemer who has set and run the race already. And let us hold one another up to persevere in our faith. Let us consider Christ and choose to grow in grace. I'm going to return to page 106 in the BCP. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, 
to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we lift up those who have asked for your prayers. We pray for William, Michelle, Blake, Owen, Amy, Graham, Laura, Eric, Michelle, Island, Stacy, Sterling, Wimberly, David, Joanne, Matthew, and Catherine. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.